Hello, my name is Renzo Huber, and this is a collaboration between Salzburg, Bonn, Maastricht and Minnesota. I have no financial interest to declare with respect to this presentation. The only non-financial interest that I have though is that I love 7 Tesla. So no matter what's discussed in this presentation, please don't forget that 7 Tesla is awesome. You might agree that high resolution fMRI, specifically layer dependent fMRI, is worthwhile. It's so popular currently that the number of yearly published human layer dependent fMRI papers is doubling every two and a half years, with about 84% of the studies being conducted at 7 Tesla, which is a problem because the ultra high field community is not growing so fast. The number of installed 7 Tesla scanners in the world is only doubling about every six years. So in order to keep up with the growth rates of layer-dependent fMRI and to meet the demand of neuroscientists, we need to expand layer-dependent fMRI tools across field strength. And in fact, there are quite a few three Tesla layer-dependent fMRI papers published to date already, about a dozen or so. So the purpose of this study for us is to see how much we can push our favorite tools and readout strategies to also get some first-hand experience at 3 Tesla and to see how much we lose going from a conventional 7 Tesla setup to a conventional 3 Tesla setup. And the long-term goal, of course, is to kind of liberate layer-dependent fMRI tools from the very exclusive club of the very prestigious ultra-high field research institutes, about 100 or so, to a much wider community, maybe also more clinically focused. While 7 Tesla offers larger magnetizations and better contrast-to-noise ratios, 3 Tesla also has some virtues, specifically for vaso-fMRI. For example, the relative difference between blood T1 and tissue T1 increases from about 7% at 7 Tesla to 30% at 3 Tesla. And vaso is an inversion recovery sequence where we acquire the images roughly at the blood nulling time where this red inversion recovery curve crosses zero here. So a larger difference in relative T1 values at 3 Tesla really boosts our magnetization and the signal we have available. Depending on the TR and flip angle that we use, this gives us back about 50%. More importantly even, the T2 star is just longer at 3 Tesla. So with the very large matrix sizes that we need to use for submillimeter fMRI, we just have less signal decay at 3 Tesla compared to 7 Tesla. This also helps us to get sharper images because the T2 star blurring results in a like, sharper points per function at 3 Tesla compared to 7 Tesla giving us maybe another factor of 50 or so, depending on the echo time. Most importantly though, at 3 Tesla, EPI just works better. We have less B0 effects, we have less phase errors, they don't accumulate as much, so, and we just have a reduced artifact level, allowing us to use all kinds of EPI segmentation tricks at 3 Tesla easier compared to at 7 Tesla. So we use this segmented 3D EPI readout from Rüdiger Stirnberg in Bonn, with a binomial 1-1 one, one water excitation and also externalized phase navigators, allowing us to get multiple shots of EPIs faster than a conventional single shot readout that you would use at 7 Tesla. We used uh, two 3 Tesla scanners uh, in Salzburg and in Maastricht, the Siemens Prisma scanner, and we tested visual protocols with flickering checkerboards, object viewing, motor tasks, as well as these whole brain movie watching paradigms as also used from the HCP in 14 participants. All three protocols that we used use 0.8 millimeter resolutions isotropic. For the visual and motor paradigm, we used 26 slices a slab. And for the whole brain protocol, we used 120 slices. And the corresponding case-based segments are acquired over the course of four inversion recovery periods. In the TSNR maps of VASO, you can see that we are in the decent double digit regime, giving us consistent activation maps for the visual protocol, the motor protocol, and also for these kind of whole brain movie watching connectivity networks. And based on the underlay, you might appreciate that the activity kind of follows the cortical ribbon as expected. Now zooming into the uh, tapping protocol here, you can see maybe previously described features that we have indications of a double peak response that we would expect in this anterior part of the hand knob. But also looking at the underlay, which is the inherent T1 EPI that the scanner spits out, which is the inherent contrast of VASO, you might appreciate using 3 Tesla, right? Or maybe for those of you who are using VASO layer dependent fMRI at 7 Tesla, you can see that at 3 Tesla, this is the reduced artifact level that you're getting. 
just like a 7 Tesla, also a 3 Tesla greater than a cobalt gives about double the set scores, probably due to the unwanted sensitivity of large draining veins, mostly at the cortical surface. Vaso, on the other hand, is believed to be less sensitive to T to star changes, or at least after we do the conventional pre-processing in Vaso. Namely, in Vaso, we conventionally acquire two images, a pair of images. One image is acquired at the blood nulling time, but due to the finite echo time, also this blood nulled Vaso image also has some bold contamination in there. So therefore, we also acquire always a second image, a control image, without blood nulling, and then we assume that the T2 star is the same across both images. So basically doing a division operation, which is believed to cancel out this T2 star term here. Though at 3 Tesla, there's more intravascular bolt. So unlike at 7 Tesla, it's not really established if this kind of division model for the bolt correction is an appropriate model. In order to investigate this, we invited two participants further to use highly segmented multi-echo readouts. Here, having multi-echo VASO and bold images using six segments, and then looking at the echo time dependence of the blood volume and bold responses. And within individual participants and also across participants, we do see that there is no discernible echo time dependence for the VASO signal decrease, as opposed to bold, which directly scales across echo time. And this tells us that at these resolutions, empirically speaking, this division model seems to be applicable. Looking at the collection of those four images, I think it is worth noting that this refers to an hour worth of data, a bit more even, which can be impractical for some neuroscience experiments. So for example, for a single run of layer-dependent fMRI VASO, you might see that it's just too noisy to really see clear voxel-wise activation scores if you don't really know exactly where to look for it. 18 minutes worth of data is already giving you a more reasonable activation scores. So to make single run layer dependent fMRI at 3 Tesla with VASO more practical, we also investigated how the application of Nordic PCA can lower the limiting influence of thermal noise. So here you can see how Nordic denoising with its various flavors can nicely pull out decent activation maps even for these single run six minute experiments. At least for these very strong activation tasks here, namely using a flickering checkerboard and a finger tapping task. If you're interested in weaker tasks, like for example these negative changes during finger tapping, looking at the ipsilateral side of the cortex, you always still have the possibility to just, just pull your signal from larger patches of the cortex. Or in other words, you can just do layer-specific smoothing further and further and further without signal leakage across cortical depth until you can pull out nice small activation patterns down to the level of about half a percent signal changes. And this, of course, comes at the loss of resolutions of the columnar directions. And since we have a variety of scanners available in Maastricht, we could even see how consistent the layer-dependent profiles are across different field strengths from 3 Tesla, 7 Tesla, and 9.4 Tesla in the same participant, where you can see that while each field strength has its specific challenges, the blood volume changes seem to be quite consistent in this tiny part of the primary motor cortex. And this might, again, highlight the convenience of using a sequence contrast that provides activation scores in a physically interpretable unit, like physical units of milliliter per tissue volume. To conclude, we tested if layer-dependent fMRI VASO is feasible at 3 Tesla, and I think I convinced myself that it's certainly feasible. While it is very hard, considering the unique RF and gradient hardware, to make field strength comparisons, I do have the feeling that it takes about three times longer to go from a conventional 7 Tesla Siemens Magnetom scanner with the SE72 and a 32 channel Nova coil to the Prisma scanner with a 64 channel coil. And the reason why it's only a factor of three is because there is stronger T1 contrast between blood and tissue at 3 Tesla, we have less T2 star decay, and importantly, we have just a reduced artifact level. And with this, I thank all my colleagues and contributors, and I thank you for your attention.